or I am honored to introduce a man of great honor and integrity, a true statesman, the champion of the Constitution, and the next president of the United States, yeah. Dr. Ron Revolution has arrived at Cedar Rapids. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. We assume that you have responsibility for your, for your spiritual life and your life hereafter and your intellectual life. What's the big deal about letting people do habits and even if the habits aren't good all the time? The whole thing is this freedom is more precious than us thinking that we can manipulate people. I, I'm also, I also accept the principle that you know the morality of a society is very important. And if, if you want freedom, you really have to have some basic moral understandings. If you have a moral society, it will influence the law. You know, like thou shalt not kill. Have laws against killing. But if you, you uh, morality can influence the law, but laws can't influence the morality. You can't improve people's personal beliefs and personalities and characters, uh, that has to be done through persuasion. So I don't like that at all on individual liberties. I really believe in freedom. I, I believe that's where our productivity comes from. But I don't believe we should tell foreign governments what to do either. I think that's everybody's <laughs> Great religions talk about uh, the golden rule. They recognize that, uh, you know, for civilization to really proceed, that you treat people like you would like to be treated. Uh, you'd think if they, all the religions that have accepted that, we would be living with less peace, but I'd like to use the golden rule and apply the golden rule to our foreign policy. Why should we ever do anything to any other country that we would resent if any other country did it to us?
they recommended trade and, and talking to people and, and uh, having having diplomacy. I looked it up the other day. I was wondering how many diplomats we have in, in our government. And I'm surprised. We have a bunch. We have nearly 12,000. I think it's time we put them to work. <laughs> You've heard it on, on in the debates, you'll probably hear it again, because uh, I think that we should step back, think about it, and think about whether we're hearing war propaganda, and not overreact and start bombing Iran. I think that's insane. I think under these conditions it makes no sense uh, uh, what, whatsoever uh, to do that. Um, so this would be a completely different foreign policy, obviously. But it would go along with what the founders talked about. They, they did talk about trade, and they talked about, uh, about uh, friendship. So this is something that uh, could change things dramatically. Things could change rather quickly. A president can bring the troops home. He's in charge of the troops. The war's going to declare, so there's a lot to do. Just think, bringing troops home, uh, thousands and thousands of troops. Park them. Park them in this country. Let them spend their money here instead of in Germany and Japan and South Korea. It might give us an economic boost. <laughs> but we've had a good example on what diplomacy, the necessity of diplomacy when really push comes to shove. Uh, the year I was drafted, I was called up uh, in October of 1962, and that was the missile crisis in Cuba. A significant event, a big event. The Soviets had missiles off our shores, 30,000 missiles, intercontinental missiles, and Khrushchev had promised he'd bury us. Quite a bit different from the uh, theoretical dangers that we, uh, we face today. But um, on the confrontation, uh, Kennedy gets hold of Khrushchev and through diplomacy and talking to him, they say, and, and the message was, well, uh, Take your missiles out of Cuba. Well, why should I? You have missiles in Turkey and Eastern Europe. Oh, okay. I'll take some missiles out of Turkey and Eastern Europe. You take them out of Cuba. And it went away. We didn't have to, we didn't have to kill each other. We waited until they bankrupted themselves by invading Afghanistan. <laughs> person because you want to at least have a conversation before you start killing each other? I, it, 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 it just doesn't make enough sense to go. I think one of the basic principles that we've changed in these past, last 10 years, and it happens to be supported by, in a bipartisan manner, and that is the concept of, uh, of preemptive war. Preemptive war means that we go and start the war because, because someday they might want to attack us. Well, that's called aggression. I mean, why did we ever allow this to happen that we now go? Why are we outraged to think that people are even able to take any weapon off the table, if necessary, that even use nuclear weapons, you know, first strike? That's not what we're all about. We're not a nation that's supposed to casually say, oh, assassinations of American citizens, that's no big, big deal, because it will only assassinate the bad people. You know, after, after World War II, uh, Eichmann escaped, but he was then finally captured by the Israelis, taken back. He was given a trial. I mean, we've had so many bad people given, given trials. Uh, Timothy McVeigh was given a trial. We didn't say, well, we know he did it. We don't want to assassinate him. But now, we as a people have accepted the idea that the individual now, the President of the United States, that we won't trust with taking care of our medical needs, we're going to allow him to pick and choose who can be on the target list for assassination. And we have now assassinated, our government has assassinated three people. And one was probably a pretty bad guy, al, al probably, probably was, but uh, he was never charged with anything, he was never proven or anything, but he preached things that weren't very, very nice. And, uh, but that isn't the excuse. But the next day or the next week they said, well, they're uh, another family member of his that's probably guilty as well. So they went over and assassinated his 16-year-old son, along with his 17-year-old cousin, while they were out barbecuing in a yard. Now that, that makes no sense. It makes no sense. We, we have to address those things. The same thing with torture. 
Yeah, no, not much in the news now, but I'm convinced our government still endorses torture by uh, by rendition. We send them off someplace. So uh, that that to me, and obviously those pictures were horrible that went on. That we we have become a nation of tortures. You know, not too long ago, uh, some American citizens went into the to, into Iran, and they were picked up. It took them a year or so to get out, and they came out when they were safe. What do you think would happen if two Iranians who were about 21 years old and they looked like Mideasterners walked across the border of either from Mexico or Canada? They could have may, may very well be hauled off to Guantanamo. Uh, and, and that is sad, but it's tragic and we don't need it. That's not what we're all about. We're, a, we're supposed to be a government of laws. We're supposed to set an example for the world. We're not supposed to intimidate people and lecture and be in their face and, and being involved in violence. If we want to spread our goodness, if we want to be an exceptional nation, we ought to be an exceptional nation, then others would want to be like us. But you cannot do it with force. You can't force other governments to do it any more than I can force you to change your habits.